Hey guys, as you've probably heard, Prismata draws its inspiration from many different genres of strategy games and card games. Today, I'm going to talk about some different strategic concepts in Prismata and show how some of the game's core strategic ideas relate to similar concepts in other games that you might have played before. At its heart, Prismata is a turn-based strategy game centered around economic and combat decisions. You have to manage your economy, defend your units, attack your opponent, and pursue advanced technologies all at the same time. The type of economic decision making that you find in Prismata might remind you of the choices that you have to make in a real-time strategy game like StarCraft. For example, you can choose to build a huge economy and try and steamroll your opponent later in the game. To do this in Prismata, all you need to do is get a ton of drones, which are the basic worker unit. Some players like to increase their rate of drone production by getting a third engineer early in the game. This is committing really hard to an economic strategy and is very much analogous to fast expanding in a real-time strategy game. Of course, going for a huge economy has its own risks. Since you're getting no attackers or defenders, your opponent can counter your build by going for a really aggressive rush, like a Shadowfang rush for example. Shadowfang is a very aggressive and cheap attacker and it can do a lot of damage to you early in the game. Of course, you can defend your opponent's rush by getting early walls, but this slows down your economy. Your opponent doesn't need to commit fully to the rush either. Often it's useful just to build one or two early attackers to force your opponent to get some defense. Of course, instead of going for a massive economy, you can invest heavily in technology. In Prismata, there are three branches of tech corresponding to the Conduit, Blast Forge, and Animus, the different tech buildings, and building more tech structures unlocks access to more advanced units. In general, you're really rewarded for having high-tech units. For example, with three Blast Forges, you gain access to the Apollo, a unit that allows you to snipe your opponent's units even if they have defense. Positions in Prismata often have an imbalance where one player has a bigger economy, but the other player starts putting up an attack sooner. If your enemy is attacking you, especially with low health, vulnerable attackers like Shadowfang, the best way to win is often to stop investing your economy altogether and try to counterattack them. Units like Rhino can be really crucial in allowing you to seize the initiative because they defend as soon as you buy them and then they allow you to attack immediately after. You can use them to transition from defense to attack suddenly and put your opponent on the back foot. And against some rush strategies, this is very important because the potency of your opponent's rush is vastly diminished if they have to switch to spending their resources on defense. People who play card games like Magic or Hearthstone might draw an analogy to the concept of tempo, the idea being that by threatening a damaging attack, you can pressure your opponent into committing resources to defense instead of getting their own attackers. Sometimes the best thing to do against an early attack is actually to just ignore it. Instead of spending resources defending yourself, you can just let your opponent pick off a few of your workers and save your resources for something that will completely turn the game around, like this defense grid, which is a massive defender that can stop your opponent's rush cold in its tracks. Your opponent's rush, even if it took out a few engineers and drones, might simply have not done enough damage relative to the economic sacrifice your opponent made to execute the rush. Because Prismata has no randomness and no hidden information, it also carries with it some of the strategic concepts from pure classical strategy games like chess. One of them is the concept of dynamism or the concept of a prophylactic move. For example, it might be in your interest to invest in a tech building really early, even if you don't end up using that technology for a couple of turns. But just the fact that you had access to that technology could have limited your opponent's options and put you in an ultimately better position. Early on in the game, there's often tension between trying to play reactively or proactively. Do you want to wait and see what tech your opponent chooses to commit to before you decide what to invest in? Or do you want to go first and try and seize a potential tempo lead by getting out attackers before your opponent? The best Prismata players are very good at knowing when to keep their options open and when to commit heavily to an all-in attack. Prismata's lack of randomness lends itself nicely to the idea of proactively going for a strategy by planning your moves very carefully. Depending on the situation, you can come up with really creative and precise build orders that exploit your opponent. For example, you can execute devastating timing attacks where you devote all of your resources toward disabling your opponent's defenders and attacking them for a massive burst on a specific key turn. Folks who play collectible card games often ask me what Prismata is like, and I always tell them, just imagine playing Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone, except starting with your entire deck in your hand. You never have to worry about getting mana screwed or getting a bad draw. It's as if you have the perfect draw every single game. Of course, so does your opponent, and you should expect them to do all kinds of things to try and disrupt your plans. 
Good Prismata players try to plan ahead a couple of turns in order to optimize their build orders, and especially to lay down key units at the perfect time. Excellent Prismata players do that while also considering all kinds of potential responses to ways that their opponents might try to mess with their plans. It's a constant struggle to achieve your own goals, disrupt your opponent's goals, and defend against your opponent's disruption. These are some of the core strategic concepts that you can find in Prismata, but there's also a lot of fairly crazy units that don't really fit into any one specific strategy like rushing or econing or teching. There's units like this ossified drone, which can only be built once, but can multiply, effectively turning your drones into super drones with enhanced defensive capabilities. Or there's the epic Zamora Voidbringer, a unit that takes six turns to build, but completely changes the game after it comes into play as it gives you a giant boost of attack and resources. Prismata also has some pretty crazy abilities you can use, like the Antima Comet, which does damage equal to the number of engineers you have. Engineers are incredibly cheap defensive units, then usually you don't build too many, but the Antima Comet encourages you to mass them for a huge burst of attack. At the end of the day, Prismata is a game about strategic intuition and trusting your gut. As you play more and more games, you gather more and more experience about all the different types of strategies you can execute, all the ways to counter your opponent's strategies, and all the methods of dealing with your opponent's attempts to undermine you. This lets you stay one step ahead.